Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation EVGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be featuring a team with Torterra. Now, a lot of people have been talking about Torterra because it recently got access to Shell Smash, but this set actually doesn't have Shell Smash. It's Iron Defense, Body Press, Amnesia, and Synthesis with Shell Armor. The idea is that this Pokemon is just so difficult to knock out, especially when supported with Grimmsnarl with screen support, and a lot of people just don't know how to fight against Torterra specifically because it is not a very common Pokemon. So you've got screen support from Grimmsnarl, and you also have things like Helping Hand, Ogre Pond, Choice Bex, Fluttermane, Cresselia with Calm Mind and Stored Power, as well as Trick Room and Dark Urshifu. This team was built by one of the best players in the world who finished in the top 16 of the 2023 World Championships, and it makes Torterra look really fun, so I can't wait to dive in. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battle, check out the timestamps down in the description below, and thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoyed, would appreciate if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel, it really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's get started. Breaking things down, as always, rental, pace, and team creator are linked down in the description below, and question of the day, I want to know if you could give a brand new move to a starter Pokemon, what would it be, in honor of Torterra now getting access to Shell Smash? Now, when I saw this team, I was really intrigued because I knew that everyone was talking about Shell Smash Torterra, but I had never seen anyone run this set specifically. The idea is that you've got Iron Defense and Body Press. This is a combination that actually just won the Sacramento Regional Championships featured on a Komoo set. But Torterra can do similar things, where obviously you can boost your defense and deal good damage with Body Press. Torterra also gets access to Amnesia, so that's really valuable against all the special attackers that exist in the format, especially something like Fluttermane. And finally, Torterra can also heal itself via Synthesis. So, this is just a huge tank that's really difficult for opposing teams to take care of, and one big big deal is that it gets access to Shell Armor, which prevents critical hits. That's huge because there are so many Pokemon that, of course, would love to crit Torterra, including Urshifu, but there are a lot of endgame scenarios where Torterra just is on the field for like 10 plus turns, and a single critical hit would essentially lose you the game, but because you have Shell Armor, you don't have to worry about those scenarios. Torterra does have a kind of awkward typing with grass and ground, so you're weak to ice, for example, you're weak to flying, but Fairy Terra is a pretty nice defensive Terra, and in general, this Pokemon can just single-handedly carry you through a game if you allow it to set up and you don't lose too many resources while it's setting up. The idea is that you've got Grimmsnarl to set up screen support for it, and so one lead for this team is just Grimmsnarl plus Torterra. You go for an early screen, go for one of your setups, go for another screen, go for your other setup, and then just slowly keep boosting Torterra. Uh, Citrus plus Synthesis is a really nice combination as well because this Pokemon can take a lot of damage in the early turns before you really get going, but that combination of healing allows you to get all the way back up and then you just continue to boost up. The Grimstar on this team is fairly straightforward, like clay dual screens, but the main thing to call out is that you got Foul Play and Steel Terra. Foul Play exists on Grimmsnarl because this Torterra does not have anything other than Body Press to deal damage, which means that you're completely walled by Ghost types. As a result, it's really important for the team to have multiple ways to hit Ghost types as well as Ghost Terras, so Foul Play from Grimmsnarl, one way that you can hit those Ghost Terras for super effective. That's especially valuable against something like Ghost Terra Chimpao, for example. Steel Terra is also here rather than Ghost Terra, and this allows you to just resist Steel type attacks a little bit better, which can be pretty scary for this team. Speaking of beating Ghost-type Pokemon, you also have Fluttermane here, and this is just a return to the basics, max speed, max special attack, choice specs Fluttermane. The reason that you want to run this kind of Fluttermane set is because opposing Fluttermanes are going to be pretty annoying, so being able to outspeed them and just get a one-hit knockout with Shadow Ball is a really big deal. Also, with this team, it's really important to force out Terras from Ghost-type Pokemon, so if you can force a Ghost-type Pokemon to Terra defensively into something else, like Fairy or Dragon, for example, that's a really big deal because then it means Torterra can actually hit those Ghost-types for neutral or just for damage in general, right? Uh, it's a big deal because otherwise Fluttermane can just completely wall Torterra, and one way you could lose with this team is if you just don't take that into account, you set up Torterra and then you just lose a 1v1 against a Ghost-type Pokemon in the end game. So, it's smart team construction because this Fluttermane just gives you an edge against opposing Fluttermanes. If you can get a one-hit knockout onto the Fluttermane, then it's unlikely your opponent will have like that many other ghost types, for example. Most of the times in games, I think you'll see maybe one ghost type and maybe one ghost terror at most, and so Fluttermane be able to get a one-hit knockout onto opposing Fluttermanes if they don't terra, or force out a terra is a really big deal. 
You also have Dark Urshifu, which continues the trend of having ways to beat ghost types. And so you just have Wicked Blow, uh, which is really valuable, especially into Ghost Terras and does neutral damage into things like Fluttermane, for example. You can threaten something like Wicked Blow plus Sucker Punch against Fluttermane. And so once again, just important to have those answers into those ghost types. Finally, you've got Water Ogre Pond. This is a very defensive Water Ogre Pond, doesn't have attack investment, and you're speedy as well, so the idea is that you outspeed those base 100s, which is really nice, and it's a pretty supportive set with Helping Hand, Follow Me, and Spiky Shield, but of course Ivy Cudgel, especially when you Terra, still does really meaningful damage, and the Helping Hand support I find especially valuable when combined with things like Fluttermane, or when Torterra is boosted, you can go for a Helping Hand Body Press and just pick up knockouts your opponent won't anticipate otherwise. Finally, we've got Cresselia, and this is a Calm Mind Stored Power Set with Lunar Blessing and Trick Room. Part of the value of Cresselia is that you can bring it to support Torterra even more, so I've had games where Torterra gets boosted, uh, but maybe my opponent has something to threaten it with a bird like Will-O-Wisp, and I just bring out Cresselia and then heal any status conditions from the Torterra while also healing the Torterra. Stored Power is nice because eventually against uh, teams you can just keep boosting up and then Stored Power will deal meaningful damage and with screen support once again just pretty difficult to knock out something like Cresselia really quickly because of how bulky it is. In terms of ways of playing the team, I think I very much try to focus on Torterra as much as possible first because the Pokemon really can just carry you in a lot of matches. But Torterra has a lot of weaknesses, so it's about covering for those weaknesses. Does my opponent have a way to deny my setup or get rid of my setup, and how do I deal with those Pokemon? Does my opponent have a way to hit Torterra for super effective damage before Terra or after Terra? And what are the ghost-type Pokemon or potential ghost-type Terras on their team? So I generally try to build around that, but both Torterra and Cresselia have insane ability to go for setup. So I think a lot of times I like leads like Grimmsnarl Fluttermane, Grimmsnarl Cresselia, Grimmsnarl Torterra. If you want to go more offensively, you could go with something like Flutter, Ogre Pond, Flutter, Urshifu, or Urshifu, Ogre Pond, especially because Ogre Pond has that Helping Hand support. So you can go for plays like Helping Hand, Fairy Terra, Moonblast, or Helping Hand, Dark Terra, Wicked Blow to just get a huge amount of damage and potentially get a big knockout before your opponent really has the chance to move. Sometimes I'll consider Grimmsnarl on the back if my opponent has Fake Out plus something to knock out Grimmsnarl quickly, like a Fluttermane or a Golden Go. And so back Grimmsnarl is something interesting to consider as well, where then maybe you, I will lead Fluttermane, try to force out a Terra. Fluttermane, Torterra, for example, is nice because Flutter exerts a lot of offensive pressure, whereas Torterra can just start setting up immediately. So sometimes I'll consider like Flutter, Torterra with Grimmsnarl on the back, and then one of the final three. But yeah, generally, I start by asking myself, can I bring Torterra in the matchup? If so, how do I support it properly? And if not Torterra, then which other ones do I want to lean into? Uh, Flutter, Urshi, Shifu and Ogre Pond is actually a pretty offensive core. And one other thing you can think about is, yeah, just how do I leverage Helping Hand and Follow Me as much as possible to just get like knockout after knockout as quickly as possible? Because that plays in a pretty different manner from the slow paced uh, kind of Grimstone Torterra Cresselia setup. So, yeah. In terms of weaknesses, as I alluded to earlier, Torterra actually has a huge list of things that it needs to watch out for. This Pokemon can be absolutely incredible, but you need to pilot it in the correct manner because if not, you'll spend so many turns setting up and just losing with it. So, what are the things that you need to watch out for? First of all, Ghost-type Pokemon and Ghost Terras are huge. Like I mentioned earlier, you do not want to be in an endgame scenario where you've set up with Torterra, but you're just up against a Ghost-type Pokemon because your body press just won't do any damage into it. So it's really important to knock out those Ghost-type Pokemon or force them to Terra early on, because otherwise, Torterra can spend all this time setting up and it just provides no value in an endgame. Torterra also has to worry about moves that just hit it for super effective damage before you really get set up. So things like Chiyu's Heat Wave or Overheat, Terra Blast from something like Landorus Therian, Flying, and Ice type attacks from things like Champao as well as Iron Bundle. The thing about Torterra is a Fairy Terra into a defensive Iron Defense or Amnesia can immediately help against those things. So it's not like you just lose against them, but you have to be careful because Torterra can get one shot, which feels really bad when you're using a strategy like this. Torterra also has to worry about other moves like Taunt from something like Tornadus. I think Tornadus in particular is a little bit annoying to go up against because it can bleak wind storm, so it forces out a Terra often. And then if they taunt you, you just can't really go for setup, and then Body Press doesn't do much against Tornadus either. So that's one Pokemon you have to watch out for in particular. You also have to worry about things like Haze as well as Encore. I've lost to both of those while practicing with this team. And Encore in general can be really annoying because sometimes it just comes from random Pokemon. Uh, and Haze is not that common in the format right now, but it does exist on things like Champau. And so it's annoying because against Champau, like I pretty much always like bringing Torterra, but if they have Haze in a closed team sheet best of one, so be it. You know, you just kind of have to accept that. So that was a really long list, but I wanted to focus on that because this Pokemon is amazing when utilized properly, but if you do not use it well, it can act 
often be dead weight and actually hold you behind in game. So that's something to be careful about. Otherwise, in terms of weaknesses for the team, I would say that you don't have any fairy resistances or immunities other than going for Terra with Grimmsnarl, and so fairy Pokemon in general can be scary. The team is pretty slow paced if you don't lean into like the Ogre Palm, Flutter, Urshifu core. Flutter also has no bulk whatsoever, and one thing to note is that Torterra and Cresselia, both are huge setup Pokemon, but because they only have one attacking move, they are completely walled by certain types, right? So Ghost type uh, walls Torterra, and something like Dark type Pokemon wall the Cresselia because it uses Sword Power, so things like Dark Urshifu as well as Champau can be pretty tough to go up against, and the team doesn't really have that much speed control outside of Trick Room from Cresselia, and so I've had games where, like, my opponent will just be able to lead with, uh, like, Tailwind and then outspeed Fluttermane, and that's really scary, and the last thing to call out is with Grimmsnarl. Uh, there are a lot of ways to beat this in the early game in turn one if you lead it, so things like Iron Hands Fluttermane, Iron Hands Golden Go can be scary, and against those combinations, like, just threatening with a lot of immediate offense is a big deal. And finally, in terms of dealing with Torterra, I've had opponents who just very aggressively targeted down turn 1 and turn 2, saying, I'm just going to go for a Terra, I'm just going to use my strongest attack into you, and even if you heal up and get one boost up, that's not enough to keep you in the game. Torterra not having Protect also makes it scarier, so if your opponent just like consistently doubles up into this slot, then it can get rid of Torterra before it really accomplishes anything. So those are a list of things that can cause some trouble for this team. Okay, this is the team that James Beck won the very first Regulation E Regional Championship with. So it's Tornadus, Dragon Terra, Nasty Plot, Golden Go, Fairy Terra, Hisu, and Arcanine, AV Hands. It's interesting for Torterra because if I Terra, then Golden Go becomes a problem. I think Golden Go in general is just pretty scary. And there's Rain Dance pressure with Tornadus with Rain Dance and then Scarf Water Urshifu. So I think I need as much anti Golden Go as possible, so I think Urshifu and Flutter both need to come out here. Thinking about a Flutter lead, honestly. Flutter lead, Grimmsnarl, Urshifu, Torterra. Alright, let's try that out. Basically, the Flutter on this team is fast, and so the idea is against opposing Flutters, we have uh, advantage, and it also is just incredibly fast-paced to deal with pretty much all the other Pokemon around that speed tier, so we're often able to just, you know, threaten knockouts immediately. I would love to force Golden Go to Terra right now. But they might just click... Oh, how sick would it be if I just went for Moonblast onto this? This is actually a really interesting turn one, right from the get-go. Because basically, if you're my opponent, you could protect Golden Go and then just target the Flutter main. Mm, I think I want to switch out into Torterra here. Oh, I want to make a read so badly here. Like, if I were them, I don't know, I would consider Dragon Terroring, so I kind of want to just Moonblast this, but I think Protect and Heavy Slam here makes a lot of sense. Okay, I'm actually going to switch out and just Parting Shot into Iron Hands, expecting Golden Go to Protect and Hands to Heavy Slam. Torterra comes out. I'd also be happy to see a Golden Go Terra right now. Wow, he actually just faked out Grimmsnarl and stayed in with Golden Go. That's an impressive play. Because I easily could just go for Shadow Ball to Golden Go and that would have just knocked it out. So Nicely done by my opponent, but that's fine. Uh, I am happy to now go for Iron Defense. Let's set up one of my two screens. Reflect is more important overall. So Iron Defense and Reflect. That was a nice read by my opponent, because I think like the obvious play for me is to just Shadow Ball into Golden Go, but for my opponent's POV, they probably say, well, it's so obvious you're going to either predict me to protect or go for the Terra, and I'm just going to go make it rain. So I think that was quite smart. Okay, Ogre Pong comes out. 
I get reflect. Get to confirm we're faster than Iron Hands with Torterra as well. So I'll get my Iron Defense up as well. And they Drain Punch. It's a slight shame we didn't get Light Screen up because that'd be valuable into Golden Go, but like, like Golden Go is the only special attacker and it's a nasty plot variant as well. So it's not as concerning. Um, this turn is interesting. I think I want to bring up the Urshifu. So with Urshifu here, I'd love to body press and just start dealing damage. I'm mainly curious if body press plus wicked blow is a knockout onto this, but yeah, I want to body press and detect here, I think. I might Dark Terror Urshifu as well. Because I don't think Fairy Terror on Flutter really changes that much. Uh, Torterra is in a pretty good position right now. So here's Detect. Okay, they just Ivy Kajo here. That's fine. We get Body Press off. That's great damage. Okay, nice read, but doesn't really move the needle too much there, so I'm fine with that. Cool. I think I might need to Dark Terra to get the knockout on this, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, they'll probably just Drain Punch into this, but that's okay. I want to Iron Defense here. Terra. Wicked Blow. It's a really interesting game because essentially against Golden Go... I'm going to just lose with Torterra unless I'm able to knock it out with a Wicked Blow or a Flutter Main Shadow Ball. But the good thing is if we get Golden Go to Terra, then I can just Body Press it. There's Dark Terra. Okay, no Protects, no Switches. Yep. Honestly, my opponent's reads this game have been fantastic. Like, reading into Urshifu protecting this last turn it was really impressive. The good thing is that the damage on Torterra like, didn't really matter. So we're going to Iron Defense up again. Huh. My opponent is playing a really read-based game, as you can tell. And this is something that you can sometimes do in Pokemon, right? Like, turn one, they make a really aggressive read. That last turn, aggressive read. The turn before that, also really aggressive. So Golden Go comes out now, but this is actually really interesting, because with Golden Go out, I can Wicked Blow you. So, I think they're more or less forced to Terra here, which is really good for us. If I were my opponent, I actually would have brought out their final Pokemon, so I'm really happy to see that. Yeah, I think in this position, I'm happy to click Synthesis and Wicked Blow. They might be baiting it and Golden Go just hard switches out here, but I'm incredibly happy to see Golden Go here immediately. And they're going to commit the Terra, which I think is great. Because now you're Dragon Terra, meaning you're weak to Flutter Main, and I can Body Press you. That's great. I haven't clicked Amnesia yet. I'm also curious if I can survive a Drain Punch with Reflect being up. But Wicked Blow here should do a sizable amount in the Golden Go. And the most important thing here is it forces out that Terra. That almost just KOs. Wow. Okay, and they just click Make It Rain. That's fine. Beautiful. We survive with both. Minus one. Torterra Synthesis. Is synthesis? <laughs> Uses Synthesis. So we're able to heal back significantly and drain punch. Perfect. Okay, so with this, now I get Flutter Main in safely. Should be AB Iron Hands. I know you're fast. I'm faster. So with that. Yeah, the Golden Ghost leftovers. I think my main question is, what is my opponent's last Pokemon? They might also try to, like, since they are playing so read-based, like, my main question is whether or not a Dazzling Gleam plus Body Press KOs Iron Hands, because that's the safe play. I don't think Torterra has to be that scared of whatever my opponent's final Pokemon is, which is good. Yeah, I lean towards Moonblast plus Body Press onto hands here to secure the knockout. I think I think Gleam Body Press might do it though. 
And I really want to cover for this going for a uh, nasty plot this turn. Or Iron Hand switching out. Nah, but they did just go for the safe protect. Okay. So let's see. If this doesn't KO, then it'll be pretty unfortunate. Because Moonblast is just so much stronger than the Dazzling Gleam. Yeah, it's close. Plus four body press. Oh, they just hang on. Okay. Yeah, it was one of those positions where, you know, I if I were my opponent, I actually would consider Nasty Plotty, and given how aggressively they've been playing this game so far, I thought it was, like, a reasonable possibility. But it's still okay. I think Torterra can solo carry this endgame at this point. Iron Hands' damage into this is basically insignificant, so I'm going to just body press now into Golden Go. Okay, they switch. Smart, get rid of your special attack drop. Arcanine's their last one. Cool. This is going to be a close finish, but Body Press here should just secure the KO. Yep. So if you reset that special attack drop on Golden Go, I could have clicked Amnesia this turn, I think, but it's fine. Uh, the beautiful thing about this Torterra is not having to worry about crits at any point against Golden Go. But yeah, I just really didn't want them to like set up a nasty plot for free, right? So, I think I just body press here. I don't want to get greedy and click Amnesia, or sorry, Synthesis, as they... Mm, actually, can I Amnesia here? I mean, if they click Make It Rain, I would just win, and, like, the 10 damage that they do from Iron Hands is insignificant as well. <laughs> so, I could have gone for Amnesia there. I don't know. I just, like... I guess there's a reason to not Amnesia. It's more like if they Make It Rain there, I just win the game immediately. Maybe it's worth making the read this turn. I just, like, I don't think of Make It Rain plus Drain Punch combo KOs here anyways, which is why I feel fine. But it's like, I think a Synthesis or Amnesia there... Amnesia was the right play. Um, yeah, if you Make It Rain and I Amnesia... I guess my problem is Make It Rain does enough, and then another Make It Rain KOs, which is what I was a little bit concerned about. Like, because Body Press should KO this. Yep, so here's Make It Rain. Nice. Yeah, that wasn't even close, so I feel fine about how I played that. And the beautiful thing is this Torterra does not have to worry about getting crit at any point. But I can see maybe why my opponent brought out the Golden Go instead of the Hisu and Arcanine, because Hisu and Arcanine can't really protect, but I don't know. I think it was really good that we managed to bait out their Terra. That, that's one thing that's huge with this team, and one reason why it's really important to utilize both Urshifu and Fluttermane. Cool. Another body press here will just do it. You can see how bulky this thing is with Reflect and plus four. Like, I'm just, yeah, never really fainting. So, body press KO's hands now. Beautiful. And that, my friends, is what Torterra has to offer in this format. I think not having to worry about crits is really nice because one of the main issues with these Iron Defense body press users, like Como, is if you go for a Terra, then something like Urshifu can just get those guaranteed crits against you. And also just random crits are really annoying. So Shell Armor as an ability in itself is a really big deal. To me, this Torterra would be so dang broken if Ghost types didn't exist, but obviously Fluttermin is one of the most common Pokemon and Ghost Terras exist as well in this matchup we went up against a Golden Go. So that's why for this team, you have multiple things that hit Ghost types for super effective, Urshifu as well as Fluttermane, and that's why the Fluttermane on this team is really fast as well, because then you can try to outpace those opposing Fluttermanes and just threaten them with a Shadow Ball. So yeah, I think ultimately in this game, my opponent played really aggressively with those predictions really nicely, uh, but because they didn't have too many answers against Urshifu, I think we were able to get a lot of free damage off, and then forcing that Golden Go Terra just put Torterra in a position where it could 1v3, and even though I ended up not making the right call with Fluttermane, going for that Dazzling Gleam rather than Moonblast, because I was thinking Gleam plus Body Press could KO, and I really, really, really did not want to just ignore Golden Go. Um, basically, in my head, I was like, I lose this game if I double up onto Iron Hands, Iron Hands faints, Golden Go goes for a Nasty Plot, and then Water Urshifu, which Choice Scarf is my opponent's last Pokemon, because then they just bring that out, they can Surging Strikes my Flutter, Flutter Main and make it rain. So, that's what I was essentially trying to cover for. Um, and I didn't want to give my opponent a free switch in, while also ignoring the Golden Go slot. So, that was kind of the logic. They ended up having Hisu and Arcanine, so it ended up being okay anyway. Um, 
And given that it was Sisu and Arcanine, if I just Moonblast Body Press into the Iron Hand slot, I should just win the game immediately, because then you bring out the Arcanine, and I just launch Moonblast into Golden Go, Body Press into the Arcanine slot. But without knowing my opponent's last Pokemon, I wanted to respect the option of it being Water Urshifu. Okay, we've got Hariyama, Torkoal, Tornadus, Fire Ogre Pond, Urshifu, and Oranguru. So it's very clear there's a fast mode and a trick room mode. The trick room mode is Hariyama, Oranguru lead with Torkoal in the back. And then there's a fast mode where you can do Tornadus, Ogre Pond, Tornadus, Urshifu, even Torkoal, Ogre Pond. Interesting. So I think like Hariyama plus Oranguru could work as a combo from them. We could reverse their trick room. Um... I also don't hate just Grimmsnarl plus Torterra here with Cresselia and I'm thinking Water Ogre Pond. This Terrid is pretty nice. Flutter does good damage though, but I think I like Water Ogre Pond here. I guess it's probable that I just Terrid the Torterra though, I guess. Hmm. Let's see. But basically in my head, this matchup is interesting because I think Torterra can just very quickly boost up. We'll probably want to boost on the special end with Amnesia first, but even though we're up against a bunch of fire types, like I can just tear it, right? Uh, it's going to be Torn and Dark Urshifu. Okay, I'm totally okay with that. Against this, I think I'm happy to just go straight for Light Screen, Terra this, and Iron Defense. I guess the downside, though, is that Tornadus could just go for Taunt onto Torterra, right? So maybe, maybe we actually want to think about that a little bit. To be honest, though, even if they taunt me, it's fine. If they don't taunt me, they're in really bad shape. So yeah, I'm still down to go for this. Light Screen, Terra, Iron Defense. Uh, and the reason I'm okay with it is because Body Press onto Urshifu still does meaningful damage, and Fairy Terra just completely walls this Dark Urshifu. And also, it's like, I don't know how many people are going to taunt for Terra. Although, I guess you would expect it to go... You'd expect it to be offensive with maybe Shell Smash instead. But they Tailwind. Great. That's the thing. Torterra is just such an uncommon Pokemon. I think, like, it's not intuitive immediately to see it and be like, I need to taunt it. So there's Light Screen. Yep, they go for Wicked Blow. <laughs> no crits for you. And we get Iron Defense. Beautiful. Excellent. So now I am down to go for a Reflect. I honestly expect Taunt here, so I'm down to just start attacking and click Body Press. Essentially, like, Tornadus is not useful for my opponent at all, other than taunting. So what I'm going to do in this game is intentionally keep the Tornadus out on the field and just attack around it. Uh, this combo specifically is so good against Dark Urshifu because we both just resist Wicked Blow, which is incredible. So the question is, can my opponent really deal with my side of the field when their Tornadus isn't really offering too much? Urshifu switches out, but that's fine by me. I get a free body press into whatever is coming in. That looks like Ogre Pond to me. Fine by me. We've got Mold Breaker. The one annoying thing about Mold Breaker is that you could theoretically crit with Ivy Cudgel into Torterra. And they go for Bleak Wind, so I'm thinking they might just not have Taunt, honestly. Okay. We just get Body Press off. Look how much damage that does, my goodness. Plus two defense and reflect, so you really shouldn't do too much to us here. I could see it being something like Sunny Day, Terra, and then Ivy Cudgel Torterra. I don't even know if that KOs, though. Like, I would like to just parting shot here. And body press, personally. Parting shot. Body press. I'm down. Tornado switches out. Okay. Probably into Torkoal then to set up the sun. Yep. Okay. Yep. So they're going all in here, trying to knock out Torterra. I actually don't know this calc off the top of my head, so this will be really interesting. They'll be sun boosted, and they'll have their ability activated, but I'll get parting shot off. I have Reflect up, and I'm at plus two defense. 
So let's see. I like how they played this, though. I think with Grimmsnarl, I could have just doubled up on Slayer Urshifu, and if we knock out the Ogre Palm, I feel like the game's just over as it switches in. So it should be Ivy Cudgel onto Torterra. I here am happy to switch into Cresselia. So Cress comes out. Yep, there's Ivy Cudgel, boosted by the sun. Onto Torterra, how much damage do you do? That <laughs> did nothing. <laughs> I thought it would do a little bit more, honestly. Uh, to see it do that little makes me feel bad. Yeah, Body Precious gets the KO. Amazing. Now I'm curious how fast Torkoal is. Like, are you invested in speed? Because if so, you could bring Tornadus out and then... Eruption? But I think if Urshifu is coming out for my opponent right now, they are going to be in really tough shape. I guess the question is, if they bring Urshifu out, what do I want to do? Uh, this Torterra basically already has won against Urshifu and Torn. It's going to be Torn coming out, okay? Citrus activated. I don't have any special defense boosts. You have Tailwind up still. Yeah, see, I don't really want to prioritize the Calm Mind stuff. Um, I think I don't mind Lunar Blessing here, and... I don't know, I'd be shocked if Torkoal had speed here, but I guess it makes some sense. You would need 39 speed as your stat to help speed me here. I'm actually really curious. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm going to Lunar Blessing here and just body press into Torkoal. So they did have Taunt, but yeah, they didn't go for it in the first couple turns, which I think really punishes them. Good. Cresselia moves first, so we get Lunar Blessing. This is actually a pretty critical turn, though. Like, if Eruption KOs Torkoal, that would be bad. Or, sorry, if Eruption KO'd the uh, Torterra. But, yeah, we get our body press off first, which is huge. Beautiful. Tail and Peter's out. Perfect. So now, here, we have Mentor on Cresselia. So you can taunt this, but then Mentor just activates. I'm going to just click Lunar Blessing again, and then body press again into Torkoal. Yep, and my opponent realizes not much we can do here. Cool. That was such a good game for Torterra. I think it shows even against double fire, like my opponent had Tornadus, Torkoal, and Ogre Palm Fire, and with the combination of that, Torterra was still able to set up. Uh, in that game, like, I didn't set up as much, and like, turn one, I took a risk, right? Because I was like, they might have taunt, and it was really interesting because they did have taunt, but instead they prioritized the Tailwind, so part of, I think, the strength of using something like Torterra is like, your opponents will very likely not have experience fighting against it, unless they've seen like, this specific team. So as a result, I think my opponent was like, well, I'll just value speed control because I knew you have Water Ogre Pond. I know you have Flutter in the back. Um, the reality is, like, Tailwind wasn't really super necessary on turn one because Torterra and the Grimmsnarl aren't exactly super fast Pokemon anyway. But because they did not go for Taunt on turn one, I get to punish them super heavily. The reality is, even if they went for Taunt, though, with Fairy, Terra, and me getting a screens up, turn two, I can just start going for Foul Play and Body Press onto the Urshifu slot. And that still does so much damage, right? Like, Foul Play plus Body Press uh, probably does at least, like, 40-50% to everything that they could have, and so that's why I was, like, not too worried about getting taunted, but in my head, I was like, oh, well, if you even just allow one single iron defense, then Torterra just does so much more damage with body press, and so the main thing that I was worried about, like I said, was, like, Torko actually having speed investments so that under Tailwind, it would outspeed Torterra, um, but given that they had a clear trick room mode with the Hariyama, Torko, and the Oranguru, I would think you would want to underspeed uh, Amoongus, so you outspeed it under trick room, right? So, figured we were okay there. Uh, the main thing I wanted to make sure that turn was to, yeah, just get damage onto Torkoal so that their eruption does less damage to us, uh, because Torterra basically just wins 1v2 against Tornadus and Urshifu, so it was really important for me to just, like, start prioritizing damage onto the Torkoal, but yeah, uh, this is, once again, what Torterra can do. All right, we have Alolan Ninetales, Glastrier, Dusclops, Iron Hands, Bundle, and the Ogre Pond. Triple Ice, very interesting. I'm a little bit worried about Dusclops here, because Torterra just can't hit it unless I force a Terra out. So I think what's really interesting is I want to lead Fluttermane just to get it to Terra. The problem also with Dusclops is that it could have Haze, Will-O-Wisp, both which are bad for us. Hmm. 
I think I personally want Grim, Flutter, Cresselia, plus Torterra, but I think Urshifu you could make a really good argument for to crit guaranteed. I don't know what kind of Glastrier set it is. When I used Glastrier in the previous format, it was an Iron Defense set as well, but I recently lost against a Ground Terra Glastrier with Clear Amulet. But I think Dusclops is a huge counter to Torterra here. I'm still going to bring it because I think Torterra, Fairy Terra, is actually very good against the rest of their team. But we don't have a way to really control the weather here. So they could also just lead Alola Ninetales and set up Aurora Veil, vale, for example. And I don't have a way to stop that other than saying, okay, you set up Aurora Veil, vale, but then you have Ninetales out. So you're not really putting all much pressure with it. So it's going to be Dusclops and Ninetales. Okay. Yeah, so I'm hoping to just bait out uh, Dusclops to Terra here on turn one. I'm going to go for the Spec Shadow Ball onto you. And just Light Screen to start. You know what's interesting? I actually don't necessarily need to click either screen here if I think Aurora Veil is going to come out to get one extra turn of screens. Okay, I'm actually down to Shadow Ball Foul Play for that reason. They don't Terra Dusclops, interesting. Okay. It's Aurora Veil coming up. Yeah. Is it a Roarville Trick Room? Yep, that helps them survive, and it is Trick Room. Okay, that's fine. I mean, you probably Pain Split here. But I'm just going to Shadow Ball again, and... Light Screw... I'm honestly thinking of doubling up on the Dust Clubs. I just really want to knock that out. But I'll Light Screw Trick Room, Pain Split, Nightshade, and then one of Will-O-Whisper Haze is normally what I expect from this Pokemon. But it could be something... Hey. Okay. I don't think I mind that too much. I mean, I was mainly worried about Dusclops because it walls toward Terra, so the fact that it's just eliminated is honestly great news for us. Sure, I'll take that. It's really interesting to see Ghost Curse, but yeah, I am actually very happy that that came out because now it opens the door for Torterra a little bit more. So they bring out Glastrier. Now my, my real question is, what kind of Glastrier set is this, right? Uh, I think here I'm willing to go into Cresselia and Reflect right now. Basically, I'm going to uh, play patiently right now. Um... I think where this becomes interesting is if they're also an Iron Defense Glastrier set. But I think in the long run, I win. Because Glastrier shouldn't have a way to heal, whereas Torterra has Synthesis. And I have Lunar Blessing from Cress. Ooh! Sword Stance Glastrier, okay. They just Moon Blast us. Is this another clear amulet set? That'd be fascinating. I have foul play. Okay. I think here I don't mind reversing Trick Room and parting shotting into Glastrier. It is clear amulet. Another. Wow. It's so interesting. And the ice go crash. I, I think I could have considered uh, Terra Grim there uh, into steal and then just foul play. Fascinating. And they Moonblast Crest. That's okay. Because I reverse Trick Room, and now what I do is simply bring out Torterra, Terra it, and start Iron Defensing with it. That's really interesting. Sword Stance, Glastrier, Wick Clear Amulet. I'm just getting wrecked against Glastrier these days, huh? Uh, so I'm going to Lunar Blessing here, Terra, Iron Defense. Now my main question is what kind of Terra is the Glastrier? But with Dusclops eliminated, it opens the door for Torterra. That being said, that last turn could have played out better. I just really didn't want to steal Terra without knowing what Glastrier said it was. Or, yeah, specifically because it's like if they're not clear amulet, that parting shot provides us so much value. But instead of them being at plus one attack and me getting a switch in, they're at plus three attack. But Glastrier protects, which is perfect. So protect, Sword Sands, Icicle Crash all makes sense. I would expect high horsepower... Uh, Icy Wind is okay. 
because I got this iron defense up. So we Lunar Blessing. It also makes me wonder if I should just be clicking Trick Room now if you're going to click Icy Wind. But yeah, we're just going to try to boost up with Torterra ASAP. Snow stops, which is perfect. With this tearing, there's not too much threatening us. Still got a lot of turns of screens to work with as well. I think here I'm happy to just Lunar Blessing and Iron Defense again. As long as it's not something crazy like Ghost Terra, Glass Trier, I'm feeling actually really good about this spot, even though it's kind of this surprise. So they just Icy Wind again, which is fine. It's interesting they didn't Terra the Glass Trier there. I was expecting that. Okay. We're still faster with Cresselia, even at minus two. So that's actually a little bit awkward. I was hoping Glastier would attack first. Wait, this Glastier is so dang slow. <laughs> so it's probably min speed then, which makes sense given that it's a Trick Room comp, but now I'm at plus four defense. Yeah, you just do no damage. So now you can Icy Wind again, but I'm fine. I'm just going to Lunar Blessing and Iron Defense again. How do you stop this at this point? Yep, they just Icy Wind a third time. That's fine. Like, what's amazing about this is we're just slowly stalling out their screens as well. Even at minus three speed, I'm still faster. Which, once again, I guess isn't shocking, because you are min speed glaster, I'm guessing, but... Ice Go Crash, even with the crit, does not KO us there. Nice. And we get boosted up again. Beautiful. Their only special attacker would be Iron Bundle, which I'm not too worried about onto this slot. You probably go for another Icy Wind now. Uh, I'm happy to just give this up, though, honestly. Last turn of Aurora Veil. Yeah, because I think it's better to get a free switch into Flutter, so we'll just click Lunar Blessing and Body Press now into Glastrier. Okay, they just go for Moonblast. That's fine. Like, you let my Torterra set up, right? This was the dream scenario, so... And unfortunately for them, they miss Ice Cold Crash, but... Yeah, I mean, you're not doing that much damage with me fully boosted at this point. Body Press misses the KO, but I actually think that's beneficial because it allows a free switch in and a flutter and denies them an immediate free switch in. And what that means is I actually can take this time to now Amnesia with the Torterra. Yeah, so Dazzling Gleam and Amnesia here is really good. Gleam, Amnesia, yeah. I guess my only fear is, like, Ghost Terra Iron Bundle at this point. Yeah, so Glass Shear protects. I get Specs Gleam off. They probably Icy Wind here. Ooh, Ninetales does survive with, like, 1 HP, but it's just Moonblast. Okay, so we get Amnesia, Light Screen wears off. Last turn of Reflect, but we're fully boosted, so I'm happy to just Dazzling Gleam now and Body Press into Glastrier since that slot just protected. They have held onto their Terra the whole time, so if it actually is a Ghost Terra in the back, this can get a little spooky. Uh, they're just going to give up both Mons here, okay. That's a double knockout. Would you really bring Bundle into this matchup? I guess if you see Torterra. I mean, you already brought double ice types, though, so. Let's see. Okay, it's hands. Yeah, this game's over. Cool. Even with Bundle, my question is whether or not Bundle would be able to one shot the Flutter main, but I guess if you hit Hydro, maybe. But now Gleam and Body Precious KOs. And the beautiful thing is, I never have to worry about a critical hit on the Torterra. So. Yeah, the Cursed Dusclops was also interesting. It made the game easier for me, in my opinion. I think, like, if Dusclops sticks around for longer with Pain Split, things get annoying. But that's why I was prioritizing just so much damage onto it. 
Uh, the thing about a combo like nine tails plus dusclops is that it is just very passive there's not very much offense coming out from it so they go for terra with the iron hands but at this point a heavy slam is not going to come close to knocking out torterra and you can't crit me either so that's the thing about this team it's like getting those terras out is so important and <laughs> yeah that did 13 damage <laughs> It's just so nice playing with this Pokemon, knowing I don't have to worry about, like, random critical hits in the end game. It's, it's just fantastic. Because the worst thing when playing with these strategies is you spend, like, 10 turns setting up and healing and getting this Pokemon well positioned, and then you just, a single crit, like, ruins all of it, right? So, yeah, I think the, the beauty there is not having to worry about anything like that. But, like I said, there's a huge counter to this Torterra, which is Ghost-type and Ghost-Terra. So I'm glad we didn't end up seeing like a Ghost Terra, uh, and Dusclops fainting on turn two of the battle made things significantly easier for us. So the Glacier set was cool, but yeah, it just wasn't going to be able to outtrade the Torterra at the end of the day. Uh, and the main reason is just like, I think they could have considered tearing as well, but by not tearing, I was just able to do so much damage, which was really nice. And they, that single protect, for example, also really set them back as well, because it, it just allowed me to freely set up with Torterra. But yeah, I think they probably were expecting an offensive set, not like this iron defense set. And iron defense was like the perfect set to have against them. Uh, they also missed an icicle crash. It can't crit me, so I don't think it's really doing too much damage there, but I guess you have the chance of flinching me, which would have like slowed the game pace a little bit. But yeah, I think even if it hits and it flinches, we're still in great shape. Well, this is an interesting team, basically a reg D team, Umbreon. Gengar, Pelipper, Klefki, Palafin, and Great Tusk. They have one Ghost type in the Gengar. Um, Klefki might have screens. Might be Yawn. The priority should be to knock out Gengar, in my opinion. Kind of down to just send it with Grim Torterra early though and just start setting up with Torterra. Cresselia in the back in case Gengar is Will O Wisp and it's valuable just for stored power. And the last one, I kind of like Water Ogre Pond here. Because I can just Terra this and I think that has a really good matchup in a Gengar. Cool team here. Definitely a lot of not very common Pokemon at this point. It's interesting because like Pelipper, Palafin, and Great Tusk were incredible a couple formats ago. They fell off a lot in Reg D, and now that we're in Reg E, I see them even less frequently, but at one point, these Pokemon were some of the best in Scarlet and Violet VGC. Umbreon, generally a passive user that utilizes Foul Play, Yawn, uh, it's a dream matchup for Tatera if you bring out Umbreon, just because Umbreon doesn't pressure with much damage, and we can quickly set up against it. Like, Torterra loves going up against opposing setup-oriented Pokemon that can't out-trade us in terms of setup, I should say, actually, not as much setup, but more so just, like, uh, bulky defensive Pokemon, right? Like, Umbreon, Klefki. Yeah, you can be annoying with Yawn and Screens, but if you just keep letting me click Iron Defense and Amnesia, what are you really going to be able to do in the long run? So it's going to be Palafin and Umbreon as the lead. Okay. That works for me. In this scenario, I think I'm happy to just go for Reflect to start and just start Iron Defensing. Maybe you click Yawn. But what I can do is then pivot Grimmsnarl out into Cresselia and Lunar Blessing to wake up. That's actually why I wanted to prioritize bringing the Cresselia in this matchup, because status conditions can be pretty annoying. That's why Cresselia is so important with this team as well. So I think often here Palafin's going to feel compelled to switch out, especially if you haven't seen this team. You're probably worried about just eating up a Grass-type attack, so like Klefki switching in here I think would make a lot of sense. But it's Pelipper. Yeah, that's also fine. Okay, so there's Reflect, and they just fall play, cool, yep, doesn't do that much, and we Iron Defense, perfect. Now I'm happy to just Light Screen, they don't really have things that threaten a Fairy Terror other than Sludge Bomb Gengar, but at this point I've already set up, I'll, I'll, I'll have already set up Light Screen. I think here I don't mind Fairy Terra and Amnesia. You know, actually, though, what I lose to is Haze Palafin. I actually should have thought about that a little bit more. It's just been so long since I've actually fought against Palafin, but it almost all Palafins carry Haze. 
So if they have that, this actually becomes really interesting, huh? Because it means that I probably should have played a more Ogre Pawn offensive centric game. We'll see if they have Haze. I would expect them to. So I actually should have considered that more in team preview because essentially if they have Haze, spend a lot of time setting up to get wear. But for now, we'll at least get our screens up. And like foul play does meaningful damage into Palafin. That's one other thing to consider. Okay, they just Hurricane. Yep. It's actually pretty good damage, but we'll get Amnesia. Oh, it's a speed tie with the Umbreon. Okay. Whew, Thunder Wave. That's fine. Uh, now that I'm boosted with Amnesia as well, I would like to switch out into Cresselia so I can go for Lunar Blessing. Because they're probably going to Thunder Wave my Torterra now. Yeah. Bring out Cress and just body press. I'm going to start body pressing here because I actually do want to respect the possibility of Haze Palafin. Palafin hits the field, so I honestly think I'm getting hazed here this next turn. Ah, uh, would have been so. If I went foul play body press into Pelipper and get the KO, I think the game's just over from that position because I don't think their team is equipped to deal with Torterra from there. But because I think Palafin's back on the field, I think it's very likely I'm getting hazed here. If I get my body press into Umbreon, it's really good damage. And probably Thunder Wave now? Yeah. Okay. Lefties is fine. So I would like to Lunar Blessing here and just go for Body Press onto Umbreon. One thing to consider here, good switch. One thing to consider is if Palafin is running Haze, that means, and you're running Jet Punch plus Wave Crash, you, Ogre Pond just walls you completely. Yep, so they do have Haze, okay. Nicely played. This makes the game a lot more interesting, so let's see where we go from here. Yeah, this should make the battle really fun. Because Haze is basically one of the best moves you can have against this team. Uh, beautiful Gengar switch in as well. I've got both screens up. Last turn of Rain. I've still got Citrus intact. I could Trick Room. <laughs> basically, like, I, I would love to get the Ogre Pawn in, but I'm pretty worried about switching it in on a Sludge Bomb. So this is kind of wild, but I'm actually going to store power just to break the Sash here. And I'm actually just going to Body Press Palafin. They go for Terra. That makes me think Terra Water Palafin, you just send it with Wave Crash. Yeah. But like, let's say you target the Cresselia slot and I get the free switch into Ogre Pond, then that's actually really sweet for us. Okay, Sludge Bomb, yep. Ooh, that was a lot. Okay. Yep, Wave Crash as well. Onto Cress, okay. So they split their damage. Which is actually a pretty big deal. Uh, I wonder if I went for an Iron Defense plus a Trick Room there, how this turn would have played out. Like, Stored Power there was basically just to break the Focus Ash. Oh, that really does not do very much damage, okay. Rain stops. So, like, I want to switch this in on Wave Crash. Do I just give up Torterra, honestly? It's hard to see me getting that much value from it at this point in the game, quite frankly. But I think I needed to consider Haze Palafin a little bit more in Team Preview. So what would that mean for me? Probably dropping one of Cresselia or Torterra for something like Urshifu? Or Fluttermane. Yeah, I mean, Flutter... Flutter would be in a weird spot here, though. Hmm... Because you can just go uh, Jet Punch, Water, Terra, Pelipper. Yep, so there's Sludge Bomb. 
I think it's okay. I mean, Ogre Pawn needs to be the carry of the game for me at this point, so... Okay, they wave crash, yeah. Mmm. Cresselio kind of wins this with... Ah, no, it doesn't because of Umbreon. I actually have to really think about how I'm beating Umbreon. Okay. So I still have three turns of light screen, two turns of reflect. Oh, I guess I also don't have a grass type attack to hit Palafin, huh? Uh, oh, this is interesting. They might just double up on a Grimstar. They could protect either Pokemon right now. I would personally Sludge Bomb into this. Uh, I don't think that play much made much sense. Okay, they switch Palafin out into Umbreon. Yeah. Yeah, I think Ivy Cudgel foul play into Gengar would have been a really nice move there. That just does too much. I think in my head I was like a little bit spooked because I was like I don't have that easy of a way to knock out the Palafin, but why am I that worried, right? If um if Palafin feels threatened by a potential grass type attack from our end. So yeah, that's where it was a misplay. But to be honest, I think even if I knocked out the Gengar with Sludge Bomb and with them getting the poison, this game feels really hard to win. Especially, I think the main thing here is the big immunities, right? Because I brought both setup oriented Pokemon in Cresselia and the Torterra. And I can't do that much with either because of Haze. So if I were to replay this game, I would actually go with Grim, Flutter, Urshifu, and Ogre Pond. And I'd probably Terra Ogre Pond and just use our water type attacks. Yeah, I think it just wasn't a smart idea to bring double setup into a Palafin with Haze. It's just been a while since I fought against Palafin. And Haze is not very common in the format right now, which is part of the reason why this team is really cool. Uh... I don't even know if helping on foul play KOs Gengar, but I'll try. Oh, they actually sludge bombed into Grimmsnarl. That's a nice play. Yeah, I think so. That's one of the awkward things about this team, too, if you go for Terra. Like, Gengar ends up actually being the perfect counter to what we have. And I get fully paired, but yeah, I think this game is over. It's fascinating. It's like, not, you know, my po opponent's team is not very meta for regulation E. But it's actually so good against the four Pokemon that I brought here. Because I brought triple triple Pokemon weak to poison with the Torterra tearing. Torterra can't body press into Gengar, it's a ghost type, which is already a problem for us. And Palafin has Haze. So the way to win this is actually a completely different approach. I think it's, like I said, probably going for Terra Ogre Pawn and then using that offensively. Because Cresselia and Torterra just become kind of dead weight. Uh, you know, being able to haze, being able to prevent setups or get rid of it, wastes so much time with this team. And so it's like I spent a couple turns committing to Torterra. Torterra would have been in a really good spot without haze, but with haze alone, I suddenly just do low damage and I don't do anything with Torterra either, right? So like I might feel kind of forced to switch out or just kind of click the body press like I did in earlier this battle. So yeah, I think. Um, Palafin is a Pokemon that almost always carries Haze, so seeing it in Team Preview, I should have actually just had the awareness to drop bringing it immediately. Champau is one of those that's really awkward, where I'm going to bring Torterra most of the times, and if they have Haze, so be it in a best-of-one environment, but if they don't, then we should be in really good shape. But Palafin is something where if I see it, I should just assume Haze immediately. Um, so I think Ogre Pond was the actual most important Pokemon in this matchup, because if I go for Terra with it, like, you no longer deal super effective damage with Sludge Bomb, I wall your Palafin, I wall your Pelipper... Yeah, Umbreon can go for foul play onto us, so that would be kind of annoying, but yeah, um, given the four that they brought, I would probably lead Ogre Pond. I'd, I think I'd go Grimstar Ogre Pond, and just like, set up screens, play around Ogre Pond, and in the back, I don't think I'd even bother bringing Torterra. Um, 
So Grimmsnarl, Ogre Pond, and Flutter plus Urshifu as the back two is probably how I'd approach this. Maybe Cresselia if I get spooked out because of Thunder Wave from Umbreon. I think you can make an argument to bring Cress out just for Lunar Blessing. Um, but yeah, basically what makes this game challenging is Umbreon is completely immune to Cresselia's attack, and Gengar is completely immune to the body press, right? And then, like, the Umbreon switch into Gengar, really nicely done, and Gengar was just doing so much damage with Sludge Bomb across the board. So, I needed to lean more into my offense here, and it's like, if they don't have Haze on Palafin, then the way I played makes sense, but Haze is so common on Palafin that I should just assume it has that. And honestly, I just, like, didn't really think about it because I haven't fought Palafin in so long, just because it's not really common in this format, and that's because Water Ogre Pond is everywhere. So, Huge props to my opponent, because despite having Water Ogre Pond would follow me, they still won. Um, that turn where I went for the double, the or Helping Hand Foul Play onto the Ogre Pond slot, that just made no sense. Like, that was objectively just a bad play. I think I was more trying to think of, like, a 3-4 turn game plan in which I could win the game. But like I said, even if I knock out the Gengar there, I think it's still really challenging, um, because I take so much damage. Yeah, and, like, I, I can't deal enough damage to Umbreon at that point, because, like, neither Cresselia nor my Grimmsnarl can touch Umbreon. So, yeah, that turn was, like, a big mistake, but I think, honestly, at that point, the battle was over because I'd lost so many resources. But it's always good to still think about, like, okay, that why did that, that turn go wrong? And to me, this battle was lost off not respecting Haze Palfin enough and then not bringing the right Pokemon. Oh, wow. Sableye, it's Pathra. Water Ogre Punch, you hands Flutter Mane. Uh, I'm really worried about Espathra. I, like, don't even know if I can bring Torterra easily into this matchup because they have dual ghost types, a potential ghost Terra on Chiyu and Espathra, which can just quickly lower our special defense with Lumina Crash. Well, this matchup looks really hard. Because we also don't have Spirit Break on Grim. I can still try bringing Torterra, but I don't know. Like, you can get taunted by Sable. I can get Will O Wisp by it. It's bad can lower our special defense. I'm thinking something like Ogre Pond. Flutter Mane. Torterra, Urshifu. So, part of the idea behind this lead is a lot of opposing teams will lead um, Iron Hands plus Fluttermane as a way to knock out Grimmsnarl before Grimmsnarl can do much on turn 1. So, what I would like to do in this position is use this lead to put on a lot of offensive pressure. I can even go for something like Helping Hand Moonblast, for example. It's going to be Sable as Pathra. Okay. Man, I guess I don't mind that too much. Um... I would love to just eliminate Sableye, because I can see a Spathra protecting turn 1, so I want to Helping Hand Moonblast Sableye to cover for Rosella Beery. There's Helping Hand, no Terra from there, and so I would think a Spathra protects here, yeah. Cool. Gravity, okay. Oh, and it's not Roselli either. Is it Sashed? Okay. Oh, Sash. <laughs> a critical hit as well. So that's his overkill. So you'll get four times super effective, choice specs, same type attack bonus, helping hand boosted, and a crit. Gravity is scary, though. I mean, yeah, it's pretty expected. Um, I can follow me to redirect Hypnosis away. You just bring out Fluttermane. Speed booster or special attack? Special attack. Hmm. I assume it's Bathra. Plus one speed, outspeeds Flutter, so you Hypnosis right now. I guess who do you Hypnosis is the question. Because if you expect this to Terra, I could Helping Hand, Fairy Terra, Moonblast their Flutter.
I'm gonna go for it. Basically, the logic behind this play is I think if you're my opponent, you have to respect me going for Terra with the Ogre Pawn. It, it feels tough, though, because I think they could easily just make the right call here and put the Flutter to sleep instead. But I think Ogre Pawn going for Terra and attacking offensively is really scary. Because I could just go for Ivy Cudgel onto your Flutter. Okay, so they're Fairy Terra Flutter, yeah. And I know I'll let my Flutter is very likely going to be faster here, which is why I'm moving to make this play. So here's Helping Hand. Ah, uh, they made the right call though. Okay, nicely done. Okay. Take a turn of sleep. They're gonna go for Moonblast now of their own. And target Ogre Pawn. That gets the one hit KO. Yeah, like if I had gone for just uh, Water Terra there, I would have been able to Ivy Cudgel Flutter, but I guess they're probably bulky enough to survive that, which is why they were willing to make that play. This is really tricky. It's really hard for me to deal with sleep, and like, I can't set up easily with Torterra either, because, and like, even if I did, Body Press wouldn't be doing too much, and even if I did, they could just Lumina Crash me. I'm bringing out Urshifu here. Okay. If I were them, I would Hypnosis into Urshifu, so I'd want to Detect here, and then just Moonblast into Espathra. I think this game highlights how you can beat Torterra, even though I haven't brought it out on the field yet. One, my opponent's team is really special leaning, so it's not like I get that much value out of iron defense. And two, it's just way too difficult to set up quickly enough. Okay, so they do go for Hypnosis on Urshifu, yep. We need to wake up quickly here. Flutter does wake up though, okay, nice. So you get Moonblast off. I wonder if this KOs. Nice. Okay, the fact that that knocks out is huge, because um, Espathra is just so annoying for this team to de deal with. And they go for Dazzle. Okay. Without that wake-up, I think things would get really dicey. I would consider switching Urshifu out into Torterra. Um, Dazzle does a lot, and it's Chiyu as my opponent's last one. And given that I committed my Terra, we kind of need to knock out Chiyu here. Curious about the item on Chiyu. If it's Choice Scarf, I lose. You know what I could also do, though, is... Sucker Punch, Flutter, and Moonblast the Flutter. Seems maybe a little troll, though, honestly. I want to double up on Chiyu. Okay, Chiyu doesn't protect, but is it Scarfed? It's not. Cool. So we get Moonblast off. Nice. They faint. And Dazzling Gleam. It's still going to be a pretty darn close finish here. Um, I guess if I had Cresselia over Torterra, I'd have maybe a better shot because I could just Calm Mind and Lunar Blessing and Stored Power. So let's see if we can seal it up with Torterra because I do have Amnesia and Synthesis. I'm thinking here you just Dazzling Gleam, right? So I like to detect here and synthesis, or sorry, amnesia. But I'm worried they just moonblast into Torterra in this spot. Okay, it's gleam, nice. Can Torterra seal us this game? Let's see. This is gonna do a lot. It's special attack booster and fairy Terra, but a single amnesia changes things substantially. It actually does a little bit less than I expected, so we'll take that. So we'll get Amnesia number one up. 
No more gravity, but that doesn't really make a difference at this point in the game. I'm going to Sucker Punch into Fluttermane, and then Amnesia again, and then Synthesis. Okay, decent damage from Sucker Punch. They just as in Gleam again, yep. So this should do around 25% now. Yep. So now the question is, how much does a Moonblast do? Also, if it randomly had an Icy Wind, even though it's Special Attack Booster Flutter, it could also win. But it's really nice knowing I don't have to worry about getting crit in this end game. So we're going to heal up with Synthesis now. This might take a little bit of time. Uh, okay, they go for Moonblast here. Yep. 100 down to 46, so that did 54 damage. Okay. So I get Synthesis off. Cool. Uh, we don't have to worry about getting crit here. 54, so I can definitely take two. So I'm happy to just go for my final Amnesia right now. Not having to worry about crits in a scenario like this is exactly why Torterra is so great. Okay, special attack drop. Doesn't really matter. We get Amnesia up again. Oh, Torterra, are you going to be able to clutch it out for us here? Let's go. Synthesis. I mean, I feel good about this position, right? Because like, we know exactly how much Moonblast is doing. So you go for Sh Shadow Ball for the special defense drop, which makes sense. 91 to 63, that did 28 damage. Even if they were to get a special defense drop right now, like we can just Amnesia again to ignore it. So, yeah. The main thing to think about is our Synthesis PP is limited, but I'm going to just Iron Defense up now. And even if they get a single special defense drop right now, I feel fine. Yeah, like, this is doing nothing. Do you guys ever think you'd see the day where Torterra 1v1s a Fluttermain? Uh, here... Yeah, like, not having to worry about crits is big. And a Shadow Ball into a drop. I mean, I might as well Synthesis. I'm just trying to think about how to extract max value out of it, but I think it's fine. Yeah, no need to get dicey. And we have enough PP here, we're not worried. So, it's 115. We heal all the way back up. And this is, once again, why, like, getting your opponent's Terras out of the Ghost types are so important when using this team. So, now we go for Iron Defense again. Yep, and they just keep Shadow Balling. But, like I said, having this ability means we do not have to worry about critical kits at any point. Which is a game changer, I think. In an endgame like this, without Shell Armor, it's actually very likely we get crit. But, yep, they just Shadow Ball again. Beautiful. And Iron Defense, perfect. So, let's check. Torterra, plus 6 special defense and plus 6 defense. Now we can just go for body press. I wonder if the body press KOs. I would expect it to, but let's see. So they go for another Shadow Ball. But there's nothing my opponent can actually do to win here because we have Shell Armor. Boop. <laughs> and folks, we just saw a Torterra 1v1 A Flutter main with Iron Defense, Body Press, Amnesia, and Synthesis. So, in the end, Torterra actually did end, uh, end up bringing a lot of value. I think the scary thing is if I brought Cresselia as my last one, I am more vulnerable to critical hits, so I could Calm Mind up. But Calm Mind also doesn't increase my special defense as quickly as Torterra's Amnesia. So, yeah. That was quite a game, but um, we got lucky in that one because I got a early wake up with Flutter main. I think if Flutter stays asleep for longer, it's just uh, probably game over. And that turn specifically, I think the play I was contemplating was going for a Water Terra with Ogre Pond and then going for the Ivy Cudgel onto Flutter. But I was willing to make that kind of read because I figured if they got it wrong, I would be up 4-2 immediately, although... I think I also should wonder whether or not I should have targeted the um, Aspathra instead with the Helping Hand combo, just because the Hypnosis from that is really scary. Uh, there's a lot more that could have went wrong for us in that battle as well. But ultimately, I think, yeah, Hypnosis is just a really good way to obviously induce sleep plus Sableye. Like, Gravity plus Hypnosis is not something you're going to generally team build for, and this team being slower paced... It's really difficult to deal with because, like, yeah, I felt pressure to knock out Sableye so that I couldn't, like, will o -Wisp or taunt, like, the Torterra. But by having only Ogre Pond and Flutter out of the field, 
like i don't apply well, actually i mean i apply decent pressure but the problem is hypnosis being able to put one thing to sleep right um and there's no way to really get around that so i think without an early wake up the game is just a loss um but fortunately we were able to get that early wake up and then torterra was able to clutch it out for us in the end Anyway, that's going to be it for this one, so thank you so much as always for joining me, and I hope that I've shown you the power of this unique Torterra set. Torterra, I've just never used before really in VGC, even though it's existed for so long, so I'm just happy to play a format where it can be remotely viable, and I think it put in so much work in so many of the games that we had today. So, thanks for watching, leave a like if you enjoy, and I'll see you all soon. Alright, peace.